Welcome to Nintendo Voice Chat, IGN's Nintendo podcast. My name is Philip Mewson, and today I am joined by Pear Schneider, Hi, Philip. Brendan Graber, hey. and wh- what? Zachary Ryan. <laughs> it's me, I'm back. Oh, oh my okay, goodness. Okay. So real quick, in the time that I've been gone, um, Nintendo's hiring for a Zelda level designer. I think that means that a Link's Awakening sequel is coming uh, in the vein of Link Between Worlds. Um, the Mario Tennis uh, Aces demo rules. Very good. Super fun. I'm bad at it, but I can't wait to play more of it. Uh, N64 Classic is not, nor will it be a thing. I I think they're going to release all those games for you to buy in some sort of virtual console thing that they haven't really scuff, talked about. Scuff, scuff, scuff. Resident Evil 7 Cloud Save sounds like a terrible idea. I don't know why anybody would play that game that way. Uh, Mar- uh, Mega Man Legacy Collection and Yoku are both incredible. Two thumbs way up. I love them, and they're very good games. Uh, Sushi Striker is best played on the 3DS, not the Nintendo Switch. Correct. And uh, I'm so stoked that Fortnite has leaked. Okay, that's Whoa. it. All right, everybody. What Welcome back, Zachary Ryan. <laughs> Just making up for lost time, boys. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us today on this beautiful post E3 episode. We did it. it. So nice. We all survived. We're done. Whew, yes, yeah. I know. It was actually my first E3 with IGN. Correct. Which was an incredible experience. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. first E3 ever. So. No. Really? Nah. First one. I heard it was your first D three. Yeah, twentieth or something like that. I don't, I don't even count anymore. Oh man, there is a the next one. <laughs> there's a ton of stuff to go over today. We've got uh, obviously Nintendo's entire E three direct, and we're actually going to kind of be doing a pseudo review of it, um, which should be a little fun. We'll go by uh, down everything that they announced, leading up to, of course, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, the biggest Nintendo announcement um, or reveal, I guess, of the show as well as the Octopath Traveler prologue demo, which was just released last Friday, and the Splatoon 2 Octo expansion is out. Which so many Octopi these yeah, days. So I know, there's a ton of them. Yeah. It's an Octo console. And uh, we'll be diving into a review discussion for that. We're, we're going to take a small little break right in the middle of the episode, um, and in which case you guys can check out our Mario Tennis Aces review. We'll be playing that in the interim. Um, and then after that, we're going to be talking about not only Mario Tennis Aces, but Hollow Knight, uh, Fortnite, Paladins. There's just like, a lot of stuff. Well, nights. Yes, yep. lots of nights. Nights and octopus. Nights and nights. <laughs> uh, but let's go ahead and dive right back into what happened at Nintendo's E3 2018 Direct. We were there. We were there. Yeah. Uh, we saw it. Yeah. Hi. I mean, I don't want to say high expe- expectations. We expected them to talk about 2018 titles and not go too far outside of 2018. Last year, they kind of broke their own rule by announcing Metroid or just the logo of uh, Met- Metroid Prime 4. Um, we got that logo so that we're done with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, obviously, we want to see more of that game. But, like, yeah, it was... Um, I, overall, I was excited about all the Smash Brothers reveals. Pokemon had already been revealed, so it didn't it, it didn't kind of add any extra oomph. Played that game, enjoyed it. We can talk about that later. So I felt overall it was a pretty tepid um, conference, except for the Smash Brothers stuff. Once you got to Smash Brothers, it's like okay, here we here's such a great reminder as to why we love this game, why we love this franchise, and how this game is going to clean up. But like everything was very muted. There were a couple of cool surprises. I loved seeing Fire Emblem. Uh, yes. Yeah, that was cool. Damon Hatfield's new game, Damon X Machina. It was, <laughs> yeah. was a really cool surprise. That, but, honestly, but, that Damon X uh, Machina game was probably the highlight of the whole press conference. But it appeared kind yeah. of like non sequitur without any like preamble right intro or nothing. Yeah, it was just was like a bunch of butt rock. Boom. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> and, so, and so that's why I didn't think it was that effectively yeah. shown off. Oh, and I I, I wanted it just like awesome. I wanted just a little glimpse at at some of Nintendo's other franchises, and that's that's why ultimately I didn't love the, this uh, reveal, but I enjoyed I enjoyed it. But back to Damon X Machina real quick, because I don't think I mean obviously none of us saw that coming. Um, it, there's actually a lot to this game. Nintendo did a pretty big uh, deep dive into it during their Treehouse segment, and I got a chance to watch it. it I mean, if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. I'll try and put a link in the video description as well. But it's basically a mech action game. Yeah. Um, and there's like a little hub area as well that you can customize. You can cu- create your own character and customize him. Dave. Um, there's a lot of stuff here. And obviously, it's very Ooh. beautiful, too. Mm. So, <laughs> um, Yeah. And it's uh, it gives off like heavy virtual on and armored core vibes. Uh, I might be mistaken, but I want to say that I read that there are... Ex uh, Armored Core team members working on this, and Ex Machina, and yeah. Ex Machina team yeah. members working on this too. Um, honestly, like I'm a sucker for big robots. This to me, as the first thing in the Nintendo demo or the Nintendo presser, got me really stoked for the rest of the the presser, and then the rest of the presser happened. I, I felt like it needed more context, but like I I loved seeing the footage. I think the style is really cool. Um, 
they could have turned this into more of a star, I think, by by giving us a little bit more context yeah. around it. Right. Yeah. Um, but it was it was a nice way to start off the uh, the conference. I agree. Yeah. What do you guys think overall of the the conference? Well, actually, before yeah? we give our answers, I kind of want to extend oh, a question over to the chat. What did you guys think about Nintendo's press conference? Maybe we can get a poll started for that. Uh, yeah. Dan in the back room. So, uh, yeah, uh, what did you think, Brendan? Uh, I was actually happy with some of the smaller announcements, like Fire Emblem. I've been waiting for since last year, so mm-hmm. I teased for it. Like it, I had in my mind of things I wanted them to say about it, and actually a lot of them came true. I wanted there to be bigger battles to make full use of the Switch, because we've always seen some very tiny battles. Like so I think <laughs> The we, war is fought one-on-one. Yeah, so <laughs> actually seeing, like, seven. not going full on, like, Dynasty Warriors right. or the Fire Emblem Warriors, but actually having, like, units, like, troops back you up in battle looks really cool. Mm. And the ability that we saw back in um, Shadows of Valentia, where you can actually explore towns and explore yeah. castles. Like, I've wanted that for so long. That was the funniest thing to me, is, like, uh, the reaction around the castle exploration. People were like, oh, I can walk around in the castle. Like, that's what you're excited that's, about? Like, I know. It's like I actually want like a world that can actually explore because in all the other films, it's just kind of like piece by piece. You know the world by the little by the battlefields you fight in, but you don't really get to see kind of the world outside of that. So so apparently it, the Fire Emblem battles were always bigger. You just never saw the supporting characters. Yeah. And so now for the first time, they're showing them around you. Yeah. And I, I agree. It makes it much more epic. But my favorite part was when it zooms in, like it shows you a map and it is the traditional kind of 2D map view, which is... I. I love that. I didn't want it to go isometric mm-hmm. or anything. And then he zooms in it's seamlessly like into the zoom, battles yeah. and looks great. Yeah, I really like that. The name is a little odd. I'm. I wonder if we're gonna get a whole deal with the fates where there was the three versions, birthright, and the Uh-oh. extra third. So it's like you get the third house yep. gets you the whole package. Yeah. Uh, I kind of hope they don't do that anymore. I, I. I know it was a nice little like experiment, but I really prefer just having one Fire Emblem game. I don't need to be. Like Pokemon Red and Blue situation where it's like, oh, see how the other side fought their battles. I'm like, yep. no, I'd rather just be the good guys and yep. fight the bad guys. So would you be opposed to like three separate single player campaigns where you have to fight for each house, I guess, to get like the final true ending at the very end? I, I guess I have to see how that plays out. I'm not I'm not excited for that. Mm-hmm. Um, if they actually make them a lot more varied than just like you're playing as the bad guys. If there's like different strategies, different map uh, types, different wind conditions, maybe. I, f- I felt it was overwhelming. Like, I would have appreciated it more if it had been staggered releases. Like, you get, like, the DLC pack later in the year yeah. instead of the kind of, like, the Pokemon choose your side, oh, but I want to play them both kind of approach, you know? Yeah. But, um, I mean, like, Fi- Fire Emblem, those are meaty games. They're never very short. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, I'm hoping that once you finish the main campaign that there is something down the down the road. Obviously, they always add DLC maps and all of that, but, like, a new campaign would... They could cool. also learn a lot from Fire Emblem uh, Heroes mm-hmm. on the mobile because they had a really robust online mechanic where you kind of fight, you know, other people's teams, AI teams, so you don't really fight someone else. But if they actually had an online match system where you get to spend so much time on a turn where you're actually fighting other opponents with their own team makeup to rival your own, that would yep. be kind of cool. Yep, yep. I yeah. like that one. Yeah, I could see it, see it turning into a pretty big uh, title. And I'm just happy that Nintendo stuck with the release date or the release window for this. They've been saying uh, winter or fall 2018 right. ever since it was announced or revealed. So it's really cool to see that. Um, another game that Pear and I, and I think, Brendan, did you play Pokemon Let's Go? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, so we got a chance to play it. I know, Zach, you didn't get a chance to get any hands-on Aww. time with it, right? But um, yeah, we played it, and it was uh, pretty cool, right? We got a chance to mess around with the Pokeball Plus, which is obviously you can play through the entire game with just that, and it works pretty well, I'd say, right? So I wasn't sure what to expect. It actually, first of all, when you hold the 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 Pokeball controller, it feels very weighty. It's not cheap plastic. Like it well, feels yeah, you gotta keep a whole Pokemon in there. That's I mean, right. true. Yeah. No, but it's like it's got a lot of stuff in it. First of all, it has rumble. So when you catch a Pokemon, you can feel it like rummaging around in there, and it's actually and it screams it's at good. you. Good. It it can make you can shake it and he'll hear like the anguished pit screams it's of like the one of those inside. like creepy little babies that you shake and they start yep. screaming at you then like it has one Pikachu. it has a button it has a stick and the stick is a button mm-hmm. and then it has a light and that's a lot of stuff for this tiny little controller I, actually it felt pretty good what's the light for it is um when you catch something you know oh. The, oh, it like up. it blinks oh, okay and it's like for it. pokemon and Go. then the the actual motion sensing worked really well it yeah. was actually a fun action to do and like it it's a gimmick there's no question about it you can play the whole game without it but like 
I was pleasantly surprised by how weighty it felt and yeah. like the the concept that you can then take your Pokemon with you in this controller is actually really cool. I think obviously kid focused, but really, really cool. The buttons felt a lot better than I thought they would. Yeah. I thought they feel like really stiff and ugly, it's, but like the B button's like really well placed and like almost like invisible if you didn't know where to look for it. It's it's not and it's not plasticky yeah. feeling. It has like this, it's kind of like the rougher plastic. Yeah. Like it's really nice. Yeah. The one question that everybody still has about Let's Go though is how it's gonna be played in handheld mode. Because they've only ever showed off like catching Pokemon with motion controls. And obviously, um mm -hmm. I, I can't imagine kids like, like swinging their switches around. <laughs> yeah, like, oh no. Like mm -hmm. that just has nightmares written all over it. So I mean that's still out in the open. I'd imagine that it would work really well just like it does in Pokemon Go with just a touch screen sort of spinning the ball. And, and throwing it. Maybe they'll add something like that. I, th I, th I think definitely it's a touchscreen in handheld mode. And then uh, you yeah. can do curve throws too. It wasn't in this demo, but we you tried. Can. You tried, it didn't work, yeah. right? And you can do that with the Plus as well. Yes. You mm -hmm. can do the curve throws. Uh, and then the game itself, it looks it looks really nice and sharp when you play it. Mm -hmm. I actually did not mind the um, the switch from the, the, the change from uh, battling Pokemon in tall grass to actually seeing them and just being able to catch them Pokemon Go style. I, I actually do. like I, that. I, I like that. Speeds it up a bit. I actually found myself running into a lot of wild Pokemon accidentally. Like, yeah. that I was trying to avoid, and I would just see, like, I couldn't see them. They were so low into the grass. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it was battle after battle. And I was really happy to see that you actually gain experience from catching all uh, Pokemon, and it's transferred just like mm -hmm. it is in the other Pokemon uh, game series, like, across all Pokemon. It's kind of so. like an XP share on. Exactly, XP share. But did so. you feel like I didn't seem dumbed down to me. There may be obviously some stats that are not in this that were in the original games and we right. have to see a little bit more, but like it wasn't a it wasn't a total departure from what made the games great. The gym leader battles are exactly the same. Yeah. You know, it, I think because it's gonna be an older based on like the red and blue series, we mm -hmm. don't have like the perfect IVs, the breeding, like mm -hmm. the, all those meta stats that kind of got introduced later. Yep. So it is a perfect thing. Like if you love Pokemon Go and you want to try and get the Pokemon series before the next big Pokemon, this is a one to dive into go like, okay, I get these mechanics. These are very simple. And then later when we get the, the really big Pokemon game, that's going to have all the meta and like the crazy um, esports part of it where it's like everyone's competitive. This yeah. version, <laughs> ooh, thank you. This version I think is a, is a nice intro. It's a nice dip in the water. Yeah. Zach's producer traits just coming in right there. You got to talk into a microphone. Yeah. Where would I be but, without him? But no, I, I thought overall it was nicely. It was it's a nicely made game. It does not look like a cheap cash in. Yeah. Um. It's it looks good and just the variety of Pokemon when you when they're following you around or sitting on your heads and all that or you're riding on on a Gyarados or whatever. It's it's just really. If you're really waiting well for done. a competitive Pokemon, you don't have to buy this one. You can yeah. just yeah. wait. I was gonna say I think it's like a really smart way to kind of bridge the gap between you know people that are clamoring for Pokemon on Switch and. And, and those who are like still playing Pokemon Go, um, it's just a really interesting way to bring Pokemon to the Switch without having like a brand new iteration. Yeah. It allows them a little more leeway to take a little more time because like after that announcement at E3 last year, people were like, okay, when? When is it coming? Like yeah. we want to know when we can play this game on Switch. And this is a nice little way, like a nice little holdover, I think. So yep, totally. I didn't get to play it. Um, oh. As a fair weather Pokemon fan, like I think it looks interesting, but I'll probably hold out for uh, Big League, whatever the next big iteration. For You're Pokemon not going to be able to resist. I absolutely <laughs> will. Your office is going to be playing it. Nah, I don't think so. Like Andrew is only going to talk about Andrew, Pokemon Go. Let's, let's that's Pokemon the only thing Andrew life. talks about. Yeah, he now does that anyway, anyway, so it's there fine. You go, fine. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Well, a game that I had a chance to go hands-on with at E3 uh, was Super Mario Party, which is yeah. the new Mario Party. Yeah, you sure did. Switch. So, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, there was this surprise, right? So it wasn't the franchise that we were all clamoring for, right? Yeah. But it's the franchise that is, I think, in need of a redemption. Honestly, yeah, like it is. Yeah. These these games were so amazing when they first started out, and we spent all so many hours on it. Oh yeah, um, look at that. There's the uh, men that love Mario Party, <laughs> but but so. Th these men do like Mario yeah. Party. What I really appreciated was that kind of siftio like concept of like putting multiple switches together. Yeah, that that's really cool. cool. Yeah, and I guess it turned out uh, that that patent that leaked a, a couple months ago was actually true because this is the technology in action right here. You can see it. Yeah. Did they demonstrate that for you? Because I only saw it in the video. Yeah, yeah. I actually got a chance to play it. So can you explain like it? This. How does that work? So yeah, I got a chance to play this um, Donkey Kong style mini game where essentially they 
have pieces of a banana on each side of each switch screen, and you sort of have to line up the switch screens just like you see in the trailer and uh, make sure that the bananas connect, connect correctly, and then you draw a line across them. And it sounds really simple, and it is, but it's actually really tricky and pretty fun um, to play in action. So I didn't get a chance to really do any of this stuff where um, you see the board and you get to actually play the game how it would be in docked mode, because the switch connectivity with the screens is a totally separate mode. It's uh, it's called Toad's Rec Room. Mm. Um, yeah, so that's the way you would play more like a board game style, like an actual board game style. And I think it's a lot of fun. Um, there's a lot of potential here, and I like that they're taking advantage of Switch exclusive features like the fact that it's you know playable in handheld mode with the touchscreen. Um, and it's limited to two Switches. I know that the patent that leaked only like showed like four or even five Who's Switches. Who's got four Switches? I know, I know. One <laughs> yeah, thing, one thing yeah. that I'm really curious about, and they weren't able to answer this for me uh, during the interview, uh, was if it's going to support game sharing. Whether or not, like... That's yeah. a good question, yeah. Yeah, I think it would be genius if it, if it did. I, I feel like since it's a rec room, it's a rec room, it's a separate feature, they might have built that in. Yeah. You know, like it's a limited game that you send to another Switch. Which I guess would be yeah. the first Switch game to support game sharing. Yeah. But yeah. they are going to have some sort of online mode as well. Yes. Yeah. So that might interfere with game sharing. So that, that's really uh, obviously not in this rec room, though, because you no. need multiple devices. But yeah, right. the, the other thing that we were dying to hear in the, when they announced it, does this support online play? Right. And it does. It does. So yes. that's, that's awesome. I mean, this is the first time we get to play Mario Party online. I can't online. imagine, though, wanting to go in for a 50-turn <laughs> bout with my friends. It's like, okay, it's been four hours. Can we just wrap it up? But it's cool. And then it does not minutes. have it does not have stupid everybody sitting in a car. Oh, I'm so uh, happy. This is you like... are actually controlling your character separately on the board again. So so far, to me, this looks really yeah, good. Yeah, this is a yeah. return to form, I'm hoping. Only, only the number of minigames I'm a little worried about. Yeah, and yeah. the only thing that like concerns me is the amount of of like motion control showcased in that in that reveal trailer you got the it big just arms? seems like a lot of like you know like, i don't know like i would rather I, do this than like now nah, i'm trying to burn a hole right through the middle of my hand anytime <laughs> i'm playing mario party so we'll get you to compete against mr caffeine yeah that's we'll fine. Get a little one-on-one -on -one action going yeah. yeah that's all right <laughs> well a couple other games that were announced during the direct like fortnite on switch no uh, one saw that coming. hollow knight and <laughs> octopath traveler we're going to be talking about uh, a little bit later in the second segment, but before we run out of time, let's move over to Smash Brothers. Are we not going to talk oh. about like? Are we not going to talk about the press conference as a whole? I, I guess mean, we could, yeah, we could grace yeah. over that. Like, I mean, so I, I don't know, like, not to derail the conversation, but there, there were a couple things that that kind of struck me about this presser in particular. Um, I think it's really interesting that Nintendo has moved away from. Um, their traditional, like a traditional press conference at E3, right? I think that Nintendo now sees the E3 press conference as an opportunity to uh, showcase another direct. And mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if it's uh, E3 or if it's Christmas time yep. or if it's or spring, like they're going to have that opportunity to display that message regardless of how big the audience tuning in is, right? So whereas we got a Pokemon direct prior to E3 that revealed a bunch of Pokemon stuff and we got a Smash direct prior to that, this E3 or this press conference was more focused about Smash, but it was also not spectacularly huge like I think there was like a lot of news coming out of it but it also wasn't necessarily like this giant like event like it was the previous year yeah um, well it was missing as I said it didn't have that Metroid like factor right like, and I think like, that's the thing is like I think well that actually like, Fire Emblem got delayed so I guess there yeah. is that yeah. it's like a really polarizing press conference right yeah. because those of us that are into Smash and those of us that are into Fire Emblem uh, were really excited by the press conference, I feel like. But, like, myself, as somebody that's, like, you know, a Fairweather Smash fan, mm -hmm. it was like, uh, yeah, okay, this is great, I but I that. don't necessarily feel like it was, like, last year we were coming hot off the heels of Zelda and we saw a bunch of Mario. And yeah. so for me, last year's press conference was, like, just absolutely insane. Um, whereas this year it was kind of like, okay, well, this is the the flip side of that coin where this yep. press conference is for another group of Nintendo fans. But I've heard this sort of... Um, uh, you know, kind of dichotomous conversation about like, oh, well, they really blew it because they didn't show X, Y, and Z. But it's like, yeah, but 
for those of us or for those people that are jazzed about the properties that they did show, it was probably really great. Yeah, also, I, d I didn't think they blew it, but I do. I do think that the conference itself didn't flow that well. Uh, you know, yeah. flow, flow is really important. Like Ubisoft last year had an awesome conference because of the way they told the story and like the moments they had with Soliani and uh, yeah. and and rabbits and stuff. This one kind of felt like here's a game and then here's a thing and then here's a thing and then the rest is Smash Bros. That it felt kind of like rushed and nothing given proper context and introduction. It's just too much Smash it, Brothers it, too. It, like, see, I, I mean, it just like I'm cool with seeing. I, I appreciated seeing the love and care that goes into creating Smash Brothers. Where sure. like I'm like, what are those little three dots on Rob? And like they explain all that, and they're like, R R Ryu always faces his opponent, and like all these well, little and, things, uh, uh, which is really cool. Who's the the Pikmin boy? Uh, Olimar. Olimar with the cracks in his helmet and yeah. stuff. Like yeah, I mean, there's like each there's character that have something unique. It felt I like patch notes to me. Yeah. You know I, what I mean? think yeah, because yeah. this is like an upgrade. Like like not it's not a port. It's a but greatest it is, hits. It's a greatest hits of Smash yeah. an upgrade. So it doesn't like it's not like a from the ground up. Mm -hmm. So they kind of had to show like hey, this isn't just okay. We just took. Uh, Wii U and just made it a little better. Like, yeah, they're kind of had they had to prove to people like, hey, this is something you should really care what about. What do they say? Tens of thousands of micro improvements wasn't that yeah, like exactly. the, the thing that but, was kind of being kicked around? But I also love the rollout or like, first of all, the fake out of saying Smash Brothers is a game where you fight each other. Good night, right? Like it was that the, was really good. The yeah. fake out was really funny, and then saying like this character's in it, this character's in it, ba -ba 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 -ba, and just when if you were on the E3 show floor and you looked at Nintendo's booth, they had the biggest LED screen I think I've ever seen. Yeah, it was just giant. super wide and. And they would go like, bam, 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 put up all the characters. And you're like, whoa, that's a lot of characters. And then it would go, and they would all change. You're like, there's another batch. And it would change a third time. And it just really drove home the point that that's 65 characters. That's there was insane. that moment when they started trying, like, you know, Mario 1 and Donkey yeah. Kong 2. And then 64. I'm like, wait, did I say 64? Yeah. We're getting 64? And then they just keep... Going and going, oh, we have 65, too, because, you know, here's the character that we never thought we'd get because we would troll him for so long. Yeah. Sakurai's like, no, he's too big. And then Sorry. you see Kirby just, like, taking on everybody's role, you know, like, you just see, like, the depth and the nuance to all these characters and how different they are. It's like, I remember when, when Ice Climbers first were added to Smash Brothers, and you're like, this plays so different. And right. This concept is something you've never seen in a fighter before with the two tag characters. And, like, that's just one of these 65 different characters. I I mean, I really love the focus on Smash Brothers. I agree with you. There was there was that element missing of something for the other people. Yeah, and I know? will say, I, I like I went back and listened to our E3 predictions episode, mm -hmm. and I just want to say I was right. They did not show any Metroid Prime. <laughs> no Metroid Prime. But I was wrong. They didn't show Star Fox. Ubisoft showed Star so Fox. That was, that was, <laughs> so Ubisoft was my favorite press conference this year, and it had, to me, the best Nintendo reveal. Yeah. It, it, like when we were watching Ubi and Star Fox like rolled out on stage in in Ubisoft press conference, it was like, well, okay, then what's going to happen on Nintendo stage? Yeah. Because that seems like. By the way, don't look past Starlink. I think Starlink, it looks awesome. Yeah, I I got a chance to go hands on with it, yeah. and I played as Star Fox in the titular Fox, yeah. Fox McCloud, yeah. <laughs> Star Fox. Um, and it was it's really cool. I mean, the game obviously it has a toys to life mechanic, which might uh, not be as appealing to older audiences out there. But if you give it a <clears> chance, <throat> the core gameplay is actually really good. It kind of reminds me of like No Man's Sky meets Destiny, like a meets Star Fox. In there. Yeah, it's, and a little bit of battle tanks too. Yeah, yeah, and, and it some battle more, It's more kind of like <laughs> planetary, like flying around. On a on a planet with a spaceship and like you circle strafe around enemies trying to find their their weak spots. It is very Star Fox feeling so that to, way. Yeah, to me, watching that that gameplay demo felt like oh, this is the Star Fox game that I've been waiting to play since '64. Yeah. yeah, you know, I I I love Star Fox '64. It's like one of my top Nintendo games ever and watching that Starlink demo was like the first time that I've seen anything Star Fox related that I was like this looks awesome <laughs> yeah. yeah it's really cool it has like seamless like um, planet to, like from planet to space transitions you yeah oh, I didn't even know like, that I only saw like, I watched uh, you play the ground battle yeah stuff. yeah it does yeah. and you can play the entire game as Star Fox which is really mm -hmm. cool like and he's got his own story missions it's like an add-on cool. campaign almost right yeah like it, optional it really is a lot of Star Fox content in there is Slippy so. in there Mm, I don't think so. What about Grippy? No. no. 
Should be. Uh, unfortunately not. And uh, you don't you don't actually <laughs> have to ever buy any of the the ships if you don't want to. The Switch version comes with the R wing. So that's a that's a really cool. interesting like thing to bring up because I feel like the the conversation around that game is oh it's a Toys to Life game. Toys to Life is dead. But it's like that game is so much more of a game than it is a Toys to Life thing. Yeah. yeah. Because it yeah I mean you can build out your ship and kit it and like modify it using the the toy kits. Mm-hmm. But that game in and of itself doesn't need those toy kits to run, and it, it looks really like doesn't. a totally standalone so, thing. Yeah. So when you customize your ship, uh, it it customizes itself in the game too, right? Yes. Like you change the parts on the ship, so it's yeah. different from Amiibo that I said. And like you can screw yourself by mounting the gun backwards and stuff like that or too, you right? Can, it can be a strategy. Oh. Yes. So like depending on like each ship has different weapons, and you can mix and match all of the parts for each ship, which is really cool. So if you have like chain guns on both of your wings, and you have an enemy that's tailing you, you can quickly pull it off, flip it on, and put it backwards, and it'll fire backwards in the game. And that's such a cool, really interesting cool. mechanic. Yeah. 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 yeah, don't uh, sleep on this one. It could turn out to be really cool. Yeah, I'm, Yubi's, I'm looking forward Yubi's to it. got some talented designers, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, their, their press conferences just blew me away this year. Uh, my, my last note about the Nintendo press conference or, or media briefing. Um, did anybody else think it was weird that we didn't see Kimishima? I actually saw, saw him on the show person. floor, but yeah. not in the but show. But not in yeah. the show. Yeah. You yeah. know, like, I kind of thought that they, this would be his big, like... Well, they have a switch over. The, yeah. They're yeah. slowly pulling him back. Yeah. I feel like yeah. also, like... Without Awada, it was a lot less goofy mm. than it has been in previous it, years. They have that same sense of humor. It was just like, let's get to the point. Like Sakurai is his own troll. Like I, I feel like they need to bring that back. I always really appreciated Nintendo's weird like comedy in a suit thing. And it was you know? always but different. I, I think it's different. It's difficult for Nintendo to take this uniquely like Iwata element and continue it. But but yeah. I hope they find that voice again because it makes them look so different. Yeah, this was just sort of a bullet pointed list of like yep. here's all the things that are coming you know, like just like rapid rapid fire. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, we've been going yeah. down that route for like a year mm-hmm. now. I think. Yeah, it was. I, I don't know. Overall, good, not great. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I, it was fine. Like fine. Be, yeah, and, and my Graber, IGN. Fine, com. Yeah, seven <laughs> fine out of ten. Seven out of ten. Fine. <laughs> but like, here's the thing: is like, how many years have we seen certain games get announced and then reannounced and then reannounced? Like, if if last <laughs> For the year, other guys, yeah, yeah. If last year was a Metroid, you know, oh. icon, and this year was the Metroid start screen, and next year was the Metroid, like here's two minutes of it. I'm just like at some point, like. I don't want to know anymore until I can actually know more. Like, if they have nothing to show, I'd rather they do not tease me with more like, hey, here's a picture. See, I think, though, if you do a montage of, like, and what's to come, Switch 2019, you get a glimpse of Samus, it's still cool. Sure. Right? Like, it's just a nice reminder that, oh, yeah, there are all these games out there. By the way, Yoshi is out there, too, and, think, like, disappeared. You I, know? Think fell in, off a I think I'm in somewhere. Graber's camp. Like, I would much rather have a Metroid Direct in spring 2019 mm-hmm. that's like, and by the way, mm-hmm. Metroid Prime 4 coming to Nintendo Switch fall 2019. Okay. Exactly. Like, that, that to me is something that's way more enticing than kicking it down the road with, like, another gameplay demo and another that, trailer, yeah, and, you know. That's what I love about directs is like yeah. they can just do them whenever. Who exactly. all we know we could get another one just before games. And that's come, that's the so. thing that's so interesting about Nintendo right now is like they don't need E3 anymore. Like they don't they do their own E3 seven eight times a year where yeah. they, mm. they they target specific audiences. Like not necessarily are they I, revealing thirty games in you know I, an hour, but I hear you. But they piggyback on the excitement of E3 and like during the show, right? Like more than two hundred thousand people watch the Nintendo conference on IGN. Four hundred thousand people watch it on Nintendo. Nintendo's Twitch stream, like you add all that up, you got over a million viewers um, tuning in across all these different platforms. Um, that's a sizable audience. It's difficult to make that happen with your own little, not little, but your own direct events. And that's why I feel like every time you're able to get a big audience in front of the screen, you have to bring your A game. That's why I think it's smart. Like somebody who doesn't tune in to all of the Nintendo content who goes, okay, I'm going to watch this. I'm on the fence about it. Switch. I think it's smart to remind that person that, hey, there's a Metroid game coming and there's a F-Zero game coming. Whatever, right? There's no F-Zero yeah. game coming, Perry. It will be someday. <laughs> One day. Sorry, Wave bud. race, F-Zero, advanced I, I just had my fingers crossed for you during that presser and it just wasn't no. happening. Well, we are quickly running out of time, but I do want to get back to that poll just to give you guys some results. 
results. Um, so 59% of you said that the direct was okay, but you wish there was more. Yeah, and see, good, not great. I think yeah. that's, yeah, mostly agree- agreeable with Zach. We're with you. There. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, let's move on over to our Splatoon 2 Octo Expansion review discussion. Now, Oof. Brendan, you took on this review, and thank you so much because they gave it to us right in the middle of E3. Yeah, that was after the direct. It was like, yeah. oh, we're going to have our uh, determined, oh, by the way, DLC is out tomorrow. I'm Did like, you go, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, and like anger and joy. The, that was the theme of this review, is angry joy, because this is like... It's this hard, is, huh? This is like the um, the Master Quest mode, almost, for yes. the DLC. That's a great way to um, put it, yeah. It is not for someone who just plays Splatoon 2 every once in a while, or it's like, okay, or even for like the, the younger kids. This is for the people who are like really are into this game, who are like, you know, some of the topper tier players, or really want to get the mechanics. <laughs> topper tier. Topper tier. Uh, this is something where it's like every you can see some of the uh, the DNA Breath of the Wild challenges in here because every little map you go to is a different challenge station in this dark and grimy metro and the challenges are so varied from like uh, there are like you know defend an item from a bunch of octoling AI players or shoot an eight ball down a, uh, like a rope and like make sure it doesn't fall off the sides and then like they'll also find things like. This one is like, hey, match the shapes by shooting just the right amount of crates. If you shoot the wrong one, guess what? Uh, test failed. And there are very strict parameters for these things. If you do <laughs> one thing out of line, test failed, you explode. Uh, yeah. It does a really good job of getting you ready for multiplayer if you are not ready. Like and me. if you are ready, it's... <laughs> Better for actually I, training you and I, like yeah. evasion and like subtlety. It just goes through every single mechanic the game has and more. Um, yeah, it, and like the Zelda puzzles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think I caught you right at the end of the game. I came by. I'm like, how good <laughs> is it? And you just looked really sad for a second. I'm like, oh, not good. You're like, no, it's great, but, but I, I think you were yeah. getting your ass whooped. Yeah, something. there's a little little uh, a little secret for people who get everything in that game, uh, and that's nothing to be trifled with. You look so angry. I'll beat it. I'll beat it one of these days. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I couldn't be happier with it. Like I, I love the challenge. Mm-hmm. I love how it's just like you know, it's really honing in. Like you need to be very precise with how you look at things. Mm-hmm. Some things are very quick, like shoot all the targets on a rail. If you miss it, too bad. Some things are like, hey, there's a bunch of enemies. Make sure you go in slowly. Which weapon are you going to use? The weapons themselves will give you sometimes like three or four, mm-hmm. or maybe like two or three. And the difficulty is actually based on which one you choose. So if you're going to a fight with like, you know, your regular splat gun, maybe that's recommended. If you go with like a a sniper rifle and they're all on your face, that's like a hard, harder challenge right there. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, I think that the single player in Splatoon 2 was low key one of the best parts about that game. Uh, It kind of got swept under the rug. We we talked about it a little bit on the show, but Mm -hmm. in the grand conversation of Splatoon, nobody ever talks about the single player mode, especially considering like how good it was in, in Splatoon 2. So more of that but a challenge-based single player is really yep. intriguing. This to is me. definitely more I'm terrible puzzly. at this game, yeah. but yeah, I yeah. mean, I'll play it. I probably won't finish it. Though. It's really fun, it's and like hard. it has a different look to it too. Yeah, and like it's very subdued, but it's still it, got its own little hip hop style. A lot of the characters start like you know rapping and beatboxing, which is hilarious. <laughs> There's some really clever writing. Yeah, uh, and this DLC, which I really loved. If you and for the people who, I'm oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Go ahead. If people who love like the Splatoon lore of like, why are they in this weird world? Like, why are they fighting these Octo people? Splatoon mm-hmm. lore is the worst thing I've heard on this podcast. It, it, it gives a lot of fan <laughs> service to, uh, yeah, <laughs> to uh, Splatoon fans and fans of Splatoon lore. Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, you have to understand the deep Splatoon two <laughs> lore. Uh, See, this technically takes the place in a post-apocalyptic world. Mm-hmm. So when yeah. you do complete it, you get to finally play as an Octoling and multiplayer mm-hmm. um, and then you also kind of unlock some some stuff that you can wear in multiplayer as well right yeah so there's- most of it's cosmetic they're like you know the uh you can get like the octoling armor or like captain cuttlefish's hat or something mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just like you know in the grand scheme of things it's not going to change the way you play or anything but it's nice to go like to rep like hey i beat the campaign i have all this stylish stuff that you can't get otherwise but it's not like i'd say don't get it for that alone i get it for the challenge yeah definitely very cool very good Thumbs stuff. Up. What'd what? you give it? 8.8. 8.8. 8. 8. 8. Nice. That's great. Great, great, point great point eight. Yeah, mm-hmm. great point eight. So yeah. definitely pick this up if you enjoyed Splatoon 2. And if you want more of it, you can't miss it. We're having fun with it. Um, and you will probably too. So it looks like it's time for our quick little break as we move over to segment two. We're going to be talking about our Mario Tennis Aces review. We're going to be talking about our Hollow Knight review. Uh, Fortnite, Paladins, lots of great stuff. And while you wait, check out our Mario Tennis Aces review right now. Ah! 
Playing a match in Mario Tennis Aces is like challenging someone to an arm wrestle and a staring contest simultaneously. Muscling your opponent around the court with clever shot selection and proper baseline positioning during a rally is as essential as ever. But it's the layer of fighting game inspired mechanics applied on top that adds unblinking tension and strategy to each and every point you play. As a result, Mario Tennis Aces serves up the most refined and rewarding gameplay in the series to date, but passes up the opportunity to make the most of it with an underdeveloped single player mode and slight customization options. The nuanced play on the court comes from the depth of some smart new mechanics. Each player in Mario Tennis Aces has an energy gauge that can be filled by performing charged up strokes or risky trick shots. How you expel that energy has a substantial influence on the outcome of each point. Whether you gradually deplete it using the slow motion zone speed ability to stay in a rally, or save it all up for a special shot and shatter your opponent's racket harder than a handshake from John McEnroe. It's a system that does a lot with a relatively simple set of mechanics, facilitating dynamic swings in the momentum of a rally as energy gauges surge and drain, and smash shots are swiftly countered with deftly timed blocks. Out on the court, Mario Tennis Aces delivers a far more fun, well-balanced and less gimmicky brand of super-powered tennis than that of its disappointing Wii U predecessor, Mario Tennis Ultra Smash. In the single-player adventure mode, Mario travels around a world map taking on challenges and bosses in a variety of vivid locales. The boss fights in particular make smart use of the special moves, testing your aim with the zone shot or turning the trick shot into a dodge move for obstacles. While its minigames are fun enough the first time around, Adventure Mode ultimately does a poor job of incentivizing you to keep playing. I had completed all 27 of its levels and unlocked all of its courts and rackets after around a half a dozen hours of game time. But with no New Game Plus or more challenging versions of its levels to unlock, or even the option of playing through it with a different character, Adventure Mode becomes increasingly stale the more time you put into it. The other single player mode, Tournament, is also more short lived than a book of Toad's memoirs. Completing a tournament with each of the 16 characters nets you the same trophy splash screen and nothing more. There's nothing to unlock that would encourage repeat playthroughs. While it's a step up from Mario Tennis Ultra Smash, the single player side of Mario Tennis Aces is ultimately still a pretty baseline effort. Multiplayer has a considerably longer lifespan by comparison, but it too is not without its quirks. There's a decent variety of courts in the rotation, a handful of which featuring hazards that make rallies even more chaotic and unpredictable. Seriously, there's a tennis match happening in there somewhere. Yet actually setting up a match on them is cumbersome, because rather than simply choosing the court you want, you have to toggle off all the courts you don't want instead. On top of this, the absence of the ability to play an offline tournament with friends seems like a glaring omission. <laughs> Lastly, while there is a notable difference in the strengths and weaknesses of each character, I can't help but feel that Mario Tennis Aces would have been further enhanced by more customization options a la Mario Kart 8 or ARMS. If you could change your racket type or perhaps choose from alternate special moves and thus create more permutations within each matchup, then multiplayer mode would likely have had longer legs than a pair of Waluigi's dungarees. Mario Tennis Aces is an extremely fun arcade tennis experience, colourful and dazzling to look at and smartly balanced in its back and forth play. With a little bit more care and depth applied to the simple single player mode, and more variety added in the way of character and tournament customization to give its multiplayer extra spice, Mario Tennis Aces could have been a true all rounder. As it is, Mario Tennis Aces is still a lot of frantic tennis fun with friends. For more on Mario Tennis Aces, check out our 7 Special Shots video and a full match of Mario vs. Koopa Troopa. <laughs> Welcome back to part two of Nintendo Voice Chat, and we are joined by Tom Marks. Hello. What's up, Tom? Our PC editor. Welcome I'm back. Here. Yes, always a pleasure to have you on the show. You're kind of becoming almost a regular here now. A you're, little bit. I like that. Yeah. You're basically a Switch editor now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, wait a second. <laughs> Hold on. Now there are two. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, so Mario Tennis Aces. You guys just checked out our review if you've been following along with the show, and we gave it a 7.5. comes out Friday, which is today if you're watching on YouTube. 
YouTube or uh, tomorrow if you're watching live on IGN.com every Thursday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. So make sure you join us for the live show and hang out with me and the guys in the chat. Um, but yeah, Mario Tennis Aces uh, is great. I really like it a lot. It's good. It's good, it's not good. great. It's good, not great. <laughs> yes, excuse me. And that's the limitation. Like, it couldn't get to great level because what? Like, lack of variety of the single player? I right. know you weren't too hot on the length of it? Yeah, it was a little bit on the shorter side. Um, I actually didn't review it. We had um, Tristan from our AU team uh, take on the review. I can never say his last Ogle. name. Ogilvy. Ogilvy. Okay, cool. Yeah. Sorry, Tristan. Uh, thank <laughs> you for doing the review, by the way. Um, yeah, he did a great job. I totally agree with all of his points. The, the campaign or the adventure mode is a little bit on the short side. <laughs> Camelot again? Um, it, it is Camelot, yeah. yeah. It's not as like heavy in RPG mechanics like Mario Tennis was on the GBA, for mm -hmm. instance, but it still does have like a pretty cool leveling system mm -hmm. uh, where you do like progress, you get a little stronger. You can't choose what stats actually do level up, so your swing speed, um, you know, just randomly goes whenever you need it. You gain XP whether you lose it or win a battle, uh, yeah. which is convenient. But you gain significantly more XP if you win a battle, right? True, yeah. yes, yes. And um, you're going to want to obviously keep leveling up. Like, I, I never had to grind or anything yeah. like that, mm -hmm. but there were times that I just had to fight a boss like three or four times before I could actually yeah. beat him, and I would get stronger even when I lost. But so. the feel is good, right? Like feels the, great. The feel of the, the just hitting the ball is yeah. really well done so totally i've i've not played any of the adventure mode and i played the you know test fire equivalent for for mario tennis aces and when it wasn't just horrifically lagging i was having such a good time and mm -hmm. i loved mario tennis on the gba um for that reason, Philip, that you were talking about like how much of an RPG it was. So it's a little disappointing to hear that it's not in this one, but I will say that I am just all in on this game. I can't wait. And I hope that it takes the office by storm in the same way that, that <laughs> Mario Kart 8 Deluxe did when it launched on Switch. Are we because... gonna, get, gonna get some grudge matches going. Yeah, man. Barrett is really good. Yeah. <laughs> Barrett is really good at Mario Tennis. So. You know who else is good? Mm. Mitch. Mitch uh, Saltzman, yeah. 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 It yeah. turns out uh, Mitch is very good at video games. Yeah. <laughs> Period. Surprise. Yeah. Surprise. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's crazy how Mitch. guys that play video games all day are good at video games. So. Who would have thought? Slackers. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, no, the core gameplay, like the actual core mechanic of Mario Tennis Aces feels really solid. And you can play with all of the like zone shots and zone speeds, all the special weird stuff turned off. So if you just want like a pure tennis experience, it's there. And I'd imagine that, you know. <laughs> if you want to play sim tennis with these weird deformed characters, like. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it's not exactly like a sim tennis, um, but I mean, it does it does do a good job of like making you feel like you're playing a pretty decent competitive this, match. This uh, like just the, looking at this just really wants me to wow. get Chain Chomp into Smash Brothers. Oh, yeah. Chain yeah. Chomp is <laughs> at least a great as character. an assist trophy. Yeah, it would make er, sense. Er. They had a lot more fun with the cast. It feels like in this game. Yep. I, I feel like a lot of the times Nintendo's kind of first party uh, like. On, uh, not entourage, you know, like ensemble games uh, can play it a little safe sometimes and like stretch out with like, oh, you could be dry bones or something mm -hmm. like that. But this is just wacky. Like you, there's a ton of options here. Yeah. yeah. I would say if you're looking forward to the adventure mode of <laughs> Portal, <Ma, laughs> if you're looking forward to the adventure mode, it's definitely worth uh, picking up even just for that. But the, the longevity of this game is definitely going to sit within its multiplayer and its online, uh, which, you know, Nintendo is is working on it. They're, they're obviously improving online connections. We didn't get a chance to test our online um, part of the review because the servers weren't up at the time. Um, but hopefully it does work pretty solid, just like Splatoon 2 does, just like yeah, ARMS does. Yeah, I mean, does. that's yeah. the thing, right? Is like, that's the reason why Nintendo has those test fires is to make yep. sure that they can stress test those servers. And if it right. runs like I was gonna say a bad word, uh, but if it runs poorly uh, on like duty. in these, yeah, if it runs like poo poo mm -hmm. on, in the test fires, then Nintendo is gonna do their best to make sure that it's up and running in a way that that is at least beneficial to to players when the game launches. So I have faith that that the game will run at least mostly smoothly. And th there was a time where it was uh, not uncommon for you know Nintendo games to not be totally up to snuff in the online area and I feel like we're well past that era yeah. like yeah. they've proven themselves with Splatoon and Mario Kart and all these things yep. that they can we'll see that. what happens when that goes away in September yeah <laughs> but, <laughs> they have some really great ideas for online stuff too like I love the like party voice system. chat through an app <laughs> 
Yeah, it's forward thinking. Well, well sorry, that I'm might kidding. be a thing. Of, <laughs> that might be a thing of the past very soon. Well, we'll see. Um, but uh, see you yeah. on Discord. <laughs> no, like the arms party system is great. <laughs> Zach, come yeah. on. The lo- <laughs> the, no, the the lobby system was really cool. Like yeah. they're not they're not sitting there and just putting in the the most basic stuff. They're thinking of really cool systems around how to vote for stages yeah. and 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 pull off the lobbies. I and agree with that. The tournament mode is almost like a. F- battle royale system you know what i mean like yeah. you see all these people and i'm sorry in mario tennis ace is yeah. the tournament mode you 100 see all these tennis players drop onto an island lined <laughs> up yeah you and joke i would play that smaller Me too. and smaller until there's just one winner so it's it's really which, cool which is like this this mode people want in other games yeah mm-hmm. and it's kind of funny that nintendo just like yeah of course we have it like they just yeah. kind of casually slip this in here uh it's really cool yeah and it's gonna get free dlc updates as well um mm-hmm. they already announced the three new dlc characters uh birdo and who are the other two? Do you guys know? Uh, Diddy Kong was Diddy one? Kong. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, and yeah, uh, Dr- oh, it was Dry like Bones? Paratroopa. Or Paratroopa. Paratroopa. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, Paratroopa. Yep. So yeah, it's exciting stuff. It's really cool. It's it's out tomorrow. Um, Blame or Friday? Yes. I'm like a little embarrassed how excited I am for this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like a little bit. Like I, I think, yeah, I'm gonna spend a lot. Who are you gonna play at? They uh, probably the one who looks most like you, right? Yeah, Waluigi. Waluigi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It wasn't even a. Th- yeah. No. Like, I mean, no. of course okay. not. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. So uh, just <laughs> sign me up to play as that lanky deviant, and uh, yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> Another review uh, that's going up real soon on IGN uh, is Hollow Knight. Yeah, man. And you took care of that <laughs> review for now, us. Now, Tom, huh? I've never heard this, you talk about this game. <laughs> this is my Preach time. This is weird. My time has come at IGN. <laughs> Full disclosure, like once in a while, Tom will only talk about one game <laughs> the entire week. It was Celeste, it was Overcooked, yeah. and now we're at Hollow Knight. Yep. Okay, but the, to be fair, I've been talking, like, it's been like Hollow Knight this week, and like maybe three months ago it was Hollow Knight for a week, and for maybe best, three months before of, that it was Hollow Knight yeah, for so a week. During, during Best of 2017, because you had played this on PC, yeah. like, Every category was like, now, uh, what do we think we should uh, nominate for a uh, best fighting game? Tom, like, uh, have you guys heard about Hollow Knight? I don't think it's really a fighting game, but uh, we should nominate it for a couple things here. Well, to be yeah. fair, like, it was a thing. It came out in February of last year on PC, and it, I, I stand by, and I, I know you're being like Hyper, hi, hyperbolic. Hyperbolic. Being yeah. Luigi. But like, Whack. yeah, but. I honestly believe that this game could have been nominated for best art, best sound, best music, best platformer. Like I think best it is racing game, best <laughs> PC game. Yeah. Like it was, it was after Breath of the Wild. Hollow Knight was my game of the year last year. So why? Because um, because when you, when you look at it, it does it does have the kind of like the dark look of a lot of indie games, very popular. Yeah. You know, little it's got, little Edward Gorey look to yeah. it. Like what's so, so good? Binding about of it? Isaac thing kind of going for yeah. it. Like it's. Yeah. It, it's it's so hard to explain because there's so much to it, and honestly, I could like we could do a two hour long Tom, podcast. We brought you on this Hollow podcast Knight. to explain it. So please. I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hollow Knight is uh, it's very easy to compare to like a Dark Souls like game, but not in gameplay, but in like theme, right? Like it is this very dark, gloomy world, despite the fact that all the enemies and people are adorable little bugs. Um, and you, the world is just so full of lore. It's so rich in story that's not really explicitly told to you. You have to discover it on your own. You have to go looking for it. Hmm. And the story is just so, so good. And the world that they build with the music and the sound effects and all of it coming together is just so like, it's such a thick atmosphere. You could cut it with a knife. It feels like this real living place. And the way that people, like the way that sections of the map connect to each other feel like they make sense where you have like, there's a city in the game called the City of Tears and it's always Aww. raining and you never know why it's raining. Whoa. And you even talk to a couple people that are like, oh, yeah, I don't know why the City of Tears is raining. Uh, But then later, like 10 hours later in the game, because by the way, it took me 30 hours to beat this game. It's enormous. Um, There are dozens of bosses. This is the first boss I'm fighting on screen right now. This is the first of literally dozens of bosses. Um, it's just a big baby in there. Yeah. But 10 hours after you find the City of Tears, or maybe shorter because there's tons of branching paths in this game, you might not find it immediately or you might find it in 20 hours, right? There's this giant <laughs> lake right above the city. And if you go up to the lake, it doesn't tell you like, oh, the lake is making it drip on the city and that's why it's raining. Like, yeah. There's nothing like that. They're, they're two mm. completely separate places that within this world make sense now, and have so, like a connection. So to me... I was texting uh, our friend Brian Altano about this game because I yeah. started playing it uh, a couple nights ago. And, and I know um, both of you were cool on it. 
I mean, yeah, not like cool, but like <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um, and Brian described it as a uh, a, a deviant art Metroidvania, <laughs> which that's kind of my vibe too. Like, I've probably only put two hours into it, and I'm not particularly feeling it. Like, I'm not super sold on it. But I will say that your uh, gusto in in <laughs> in talking about this game and the amount that you love it and the uh, the idea that I respect your opinions and like the games that you like m- makes me want to like press on and, and uh, kind of figure out why people that that love Hollow Knight and a lot of people love Hollow Knight. Yeah why they love it and, and why it hasn't grabbed me yet. And this so. is something that I talk about in my review because it's something I I actually remembered because I've been in love with this game for over a year now that, like, <laughs> it, 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 it... I had to remember that the first time I played it, I, I didn't like it. Yeah. The first time I played it, I played it for maybe an hour or two, and on PC, when it first launched, it had some hitching problems, so it actually mm. had a few performance issues that are not here at all anymore. Um, and I kind of bounced off of it, and I was like, yeah, this is fine. It's cute and the art the music's good and then I just stopped playing and it was like four or five months later that I came back and I started to play it again and once I got over this hump right now this is an area called green path which is the second main area of the game once you get to green path and kind of get through green path which takes depending on how good you are between two and five hours of gameplay Mm. once you get through that the map opens up to the point where you have at any given time, four different paths you could go down, and they all have bosses and power-ups to get and secrets mm-hmm. to find and story to learn and characters to meet and, like, all this stuff. And at that point, I got, like, just unfixably hooked to this game, yeah, right? Like, yeah. they, it just became this thing where, like, all I wanted to do was play it and all I wanted to do was find every single corner of the map that has, like, all these secrets. I and, love these. And, yeah. Yeah, and... The, the amount of secrets and the amount of content in this game, like, Philip, you, you, I was talking to you about this, and you were like, yeah, I think I'm going to try to beat it this week, and I was like, that might be ambitious, yeah. because, like, <laughs> it's a long game. There's, yeah. there's, there were multiple moments when I was playing this game yeah. where I was just like, oh, there's a whole nother area of the map that I yeah. have not discovered. Is this your capture? Or is yeah, this that's Tom. This yeah. is me playing. Okay, yeah. so let me ask you a question. Um, yeah. Why aren't you picking up those tokens that enemies are dropping? It's driving <laughs> me nuts. <laughs> that's the currency. Yeah I, was, yeah, I was playing for capture, so I didn't really care about money at the time yeah. but yeah I, it is egregious I know so I've only played it for about two hours as well I, I like the gameplay mechanics I think the combat feels really good and the jumping feels really good I, I will say the platforming feels yeah. super tight what, what yeah. I really like though is that weird like the voice acting stuff is yeah, so it's strange like gibberish it's like, English. Yeah. there's like yeah. weird crying characters mm-hmm. in the levels that you pass by and like the gibberish stuff it, it's really charming yeah I really dig it so I'll, I'll definitely keep on playing I Race. I Hmm? You want to race so you can beat it faster? <laughs> yeah. All right. So this is the thing. Okay. There's three different endings of the game. The first ending you can beat in probably a dozen hours, maybe a little more. That's the one I'll be going for. But <laughs> to get like the true ending of the game, and by the way, the final, final, real, true boss of this game was the hardest boss fight I've ever done in my entire life in any video game. Whoa. Um, it to get that ending, you have to basically do everything that the base game has to offer. And the Switch version comes with three content packs that they added for free after Good the Lord. game came out. And there's mm-hmm. another one they're already advertising called Gods and Glory that's going to add another four bosses and a whole other new wow. section of the game. Like, they're constantly updating this. One of the Kickstarter goals was actually... Is. Yeah, it was a Kickstarter. <laughs> that's, that's why I was like, why is there so much like yeah, yeah, post-release yeah. And, support? It's because yeah, they promised game. a lot yeah. of stuff. So mm-hmm. one of the things they promised is a new playable character and that's going to come sometime in the next year or two. We this, don't know when. This right. is a whole conversation that we could have, you know, on another podcast. But like the the idea of of DLC and expansions as Kickstarter goals, like how toxic it is to a a developer community. Yeah, because it's like. Where where's Yacht Club's Yacht Club's next game? Well, they haven't had time to start it because they've <laughs> just been developing add-on content <laughs> right. with yeah, Shovel Knight yeah. for two plus years, three years, you know. So, I, like, it's interesting to me that that there is all this additional content for this game that people really love, but like, I don't know at what cost. And I'm off the rails here, but no, just I, something I to throw like, out. Like, yeah. But everything they've added so far is really good, so it's sure. hard for me to complain. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, wouldn't you love to see their take on something else, right? Like, Potentially, at, at a point yeah. like when is enough expansion enough for yeah. for Hollow Knight or for Shovel Knight, any night game. Really, <laughs> especially because this is like a two or three person studio. Like they have freelancers, like most indie oh, studios wow. do, yeah. but it's a very very small Australian studio. Uh, I can't say enough good things about this game. It's definitely one that pe- you might bounce off of, but like, I push through it is my advice. Nice, and that's Hollow Knight. It's out now, and it's fifteen dollars on the eShop. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Deal. nothing. Uh, Steal. Last note about Hollow Knight. Uh-huh. So I was watching the Nintendo press conference in. Uh, 
the war room with everyone and Hollow Knight was one of the games like Nintendo did this for a few games uh, during their presser where they were like and the game is out today and Tom literally stood up and goes yes <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, cool. I've just been talking about it so long it's so nice to finally be like hey all th- that game I've been telling you about for last year you could play, play it on the flight home yeah. from E3 yeah exactly uh, one game that we definitely want to talk about we didn't get a chance to in the first segment is Overcooked 2. Yeah. Yes. Now, Per and I actually got a chance to play this as well during E3. Yeah, and I hate you now. Yes, I know. Uh, I so if you, you haven't played Overcooked <laughs> 1, it's a it's a cooking game where four four players can work together to prepare these dishes, basically being line cooks and chopping stuff, putting stuff on plates to order. And it all sounds so wonderful until you start playing and you realize you have to organize your thoughts and you have to organize, you have to talk to your friends and you have to <laughs> yell out stuff and say, no, 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 put the corn over there. They added a ton of stuff to this one, including the ability to throw all the ingredients. Mm-hmm. So there, there'll there be stages that break apart where you separate it from the others and you've got the rice and they've got the tomatoes and you got to throw stuff across uh, we play at one level that was set in a hot air balloon. Yeah, yeah. You start out <laughs> flying in a hot air balloon, and you're you're cooking obviously with yeah, you know however flying many kitchen. Play. Yeah, yeah. Totally predictable or totally believable. And then uh, you get to a point where the whole thing I think catches fire. It catches fire, so and it, stuff starts to burn. Yeah, and it crashes down, and you all of a sudden <laughs> within the same match are playing in a totally different area. It smashes into somebody's kitchen. Yeah, and exactly. the pieces of the hot air balloon are still there, and it's burning the kitchen. But it's like you're you're actually cooking while the balloon is falling out of the sky and it creates this <laughs> rush um, to the game. We did stuff, you had to make sushi where you have to you have to cook rice, put rice on a plate, get nori, uh, cut fish or cucumbers and make these sushis to order and it was just really fun. Yes. And we yeah. played it with uh, it was you, me and Lily and uh, we, I think yeah. Bren- Brendan was there Yeah, too. Brendan was there yeah. and had a really, really good time. The Switch version, it doesn't run as smoothly as the other versions again. Like the other versions run 60, this one runs at 30 but it seems to not have that lag or like that choppiness that the uh, first game had when it initially launched. It got patched later. Right. Um, really fun game and just so many, so many clever little takes on Like, the stuff they do with kitchens, it's just insane. Like, all hell breaks loose, literally, in this game. And it's going to have online, this one, right? Yes. Which is huge for me, because that was one of my biggest kind of problems with the first one, was that it didn't have any way... Like, if you didn't have people sitting next to you, and I... I think that game is way, way, way better with people sitting next to you. But if you didn't have that, the single player just like wasn't that fun. It just it definitely needs voice chat if it's gonna be online. Right. So that that's my yeah. thing is like how do you have this game specifically as an online game without voice chat? I mean, is there an emote system? Ooh. Yeah. Like, it, like, it feels how do you relay the the idea that like, hey, this is ready, I need you to come over here with those buns. I, you well. you joked about it, but I feel like <laughs> Discord is Discord's gonna be the you, answer, right? You like have, I, I, yeah. You have to chat, but if you're playing with strangers, I think you will start to curse after a while and then you know the mm-hmm. police. Can you give us like an example of some of the words you might say? No, because oh, they're all okay. in German. <laughs> when you press the <laughs> there's a curse word button in That's in right. The, okay. Oh no, yeah. You just go like swear. Swear. Yeah. Yeah. But you can also <laughs> see what others are doing, right? At the top at the top you see they want a hamburger, and then you know, if somebody puts buns on a plate i'm like all right let me try and go get the yeah yeah thank thank you zach thank you <laughs> well luigi uh definitely uh, one to look out for yeah yeah digging um so let's go ahead and come back to uh some of the game or a game that tom and i actually got a chance to play yesterday uh arena of valor on switch which, oh, this is the moba yeah, yeah this is the moba yeah this is so the MOBA. Ten this cent- is the one that has like all yeah i was gonna say this is the 10 cent moba that has like a bunch of dc characters in it yeah. in yeah, general right like, like yeah, superman and- batman joker mm-hmm. wonder woman yes, those are all mm-hmm. dc characters yeah very good stuff so 10 cent stopped by the office yesterday and they actually brought a build with the game running on switch for mm-hmm. tom and i to check out um and obviously there's a beta uh going up Next week, it's on June 28th, but signups are today, so you can sign up. I'll leave a link in the description for you guys to check out. Make sure you sign up because it's a closed beta, and that's the only way you're going to be able to get in. And this beta is currently only for the Americas and uh, Europe, so nice. keep an eye out on that. But what did you think, Tom? Like, I mean, you played the mobile version. I have, yeah. And you, then we both played the Switch version. Mm-hmm. So what are some of the differences? What are the improvements that you've noticed? Uh, it's way prettier. Yeah. <laughs> um, like, it's this very interesting thing where I I was kind of expecting them, and not saying Arena Valor on mobile is not attractive. It's a nice-looking game, but it is very much like a mobile-looking game. Um, and I was sort of just expecting them to port it over to Switch mm-hmm. one-to-one, and they're not doing that. They're mm. doing things like basically remodeling characters almost entirely That's so great. that they look 
really lush and really detailed and really, really cool. And we're going to have more on that uh, on Monday or something next week sometime. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it's just really like it is it is visually impressive what they've done. They're not just saying here's the phone version on Switch. They're they're really making it work. So the game is similar to like League of Legends or yeah, Dota, it, right? Yeah, it's very, very similar to a significantly faster League of Legends. So like 10 to 15 minute matches. And, and this particular game is one of the biggest games in Asia. It right? is it is Huge the largest hit. it is the largest mobile game in the world. Huh. And Tencent used to say the largest game in the world, but apparently Candy Crush owns that title. Uh, so it is the largest mobile game in the world. It has it has over 200 million active users a <laughs> day yeah that's insane the the that's you remember when so pokemon crazy. go was like huge no yeah. the, the peak player count for pokemon go is half what wow. arena of valor gets every day that's insane Jeez. yeah that's it's, so crazy it's enormous so and this will be free to play on the switch yeah. as well yeah. free, free to play so that joins fortnite and, and you know a couple other games that are now free to play on the paladins switch. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. pokemon yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's exciting stuff. So definitely make sure you check out the beta. It's starting on the twenty eighth. Um, but yeah, we ran out of question block this week. I'm sorry, guys. It's a really tight episode. Uh, we also didn't get a chance to talk about Fortnite and Paladins, but we will next and week. Xenoblade and Xenoblade too. Yeah, yeah there's see. there's some stuff, some holes, uh, uh, but we'll fill them in next week. What's up? I will say Fortnite on Switch is really great. Yes, yeah. yeah. it's, it's really, really not really not just a mobile port. Yeah. They, it, it's it good. does look nicer and uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there there's been so much happening. I mean, Captain Toad. The uh, the demo is out. Yeah, Octopath demo. Traveler. The demo is out, and not just a limited one. Every character so, is playable. Really yep. interesting thing about Octopath, and yeah. I know we got to wrap. I'm sorry, no but, worries. Uh, Octopath is a you know dozens of hours long game, and your progress in the demo will transfer over, which was Ooh. such a huge incentive yeah. for me to jump in yeah. on this early because my whole thought process was like, I'll just wait till the game is out. Then I heard that, and I was like, well. I might as well start now. I'm trying to get my bard on. That's awesome. <laughs> See, I'm still playing Yoku's Island Express yes. on your recommendation, which is, seriously, if you haven't bought it yet, get it. It's is, so good. It's really good. Question yeah. for the panel. Is Yoku's Island Express the SteamWorld Dig 2 of 2018? I think so. I think so, so far, too. It's yeah. so Hollow Knight too. is. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it. All right. <laughs> Oh, Hold man. It. All right. Well, that's our show this week. Uh, we're a weekly show on IGN.com, and you can watch us live every Thursday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern time. And if you miss that, you can catch us on YouTube every Friday around 2.30 p.m. That's when we download or upload around that time. Um, <laughs> and we're also available on all of your favorite podcast listening services. We're on iTunes. We're on uh, Spotify. We should be on Google Play. And if we're not, I'm going to put us we on are. there. Okay, good. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you very much for joining me and we'll see you guys next week. Get the thing. <laughs>